Hello and welcome back to the third round. I was putting away some of the stock I used in the last video and I noticed the pickup shoe on this 3066 looked a bit worn. So let me take it off the loco. There we are. So we can see that the plating has completely rubbed off the pickup shoe in places and that the brass is now left exposed. So it's definitely time for a new one. If we look at the rest of the part though, the spring has kept its shape well, it hasn't lost any of its elasticity, the slider is also nice and straight. If it wasn't for the plating, I'm sure this part could be used for years to come. Now most worn pickup shoes will be in a similar shape under normal usage condition. And whilst I understand the need to replace them, I always found it a bit of a shame to have to throw away such a mechanically sound part. Now, they are not the most expensive or even rare things, as they are available to buy new from Merklin for practically every model they produced since the 1950s. Yet I wouldn't call them cheap compared to other consumables such as traction tires or motor brushes. In the UK, where I'm based, the most common types will set you back anywhere between 5 and 10 pounds plus shipping, maybe a bit more for some of the more exotic types. Now, some bright spark might be about to comment. Just send it and you'll be fine. To which I'd preemptively reply, au contraire, baby, with my poor Austin Powers impression. Why? First of all, exposed brass oxidizes, which will cause contact issues ranging from random slowdowns in analog to motors cutting off in digital. Secondly, brass is a very soft material, which the point contacts on the track will have no trouble eating into and a crevice will quickly develop over the length of the slider. Here's an extreme example. I took off a battered 3021 a few years back and it was so bad I kept it as a souvenir. These aspects are the very reason why this part was plated in first place. Otherwise, it would not last very long and it would require constant maintenance. The only durable solution would really be to restore the plating, which I imagine would not make any economical sense for the manufacturer, so it is treated as a consumable. One of my guilty YouTube pleasures is watching restoration videos, and I subscribe to a channel called The Fabric, where a fellow YouTuber regularly refurbishes nickel-plated items. I remember thinking the first time I saw him do this, that this could potentially be done with pickup shoes as well. But to me this all seemed to be a job for a professional, so I didn't look any further into it. After researching the topic a bit more recently, I discovered this was well within the realm of my limited skills. So I started experimenting and I think I got to a stage where I can use the process reliably. The process is called electroplating and if you'd like you can follow me as I use it to try and give this pickup shoe a new lease of life. Before we do this though I shall plug in a quick ask. This time of the year is the quietest for the channel. So your likes count even more than usual on YouTube. So if you enjoy my content and would like to support the channel, I would greatly appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything and it will help the channel, if not increase, at least maintain its visibility over the summer. You might even consider subscribing if you haven't already done so, which would also help a great deal. Many thanks in advance. Now let's return to our patient. Every restoration starts with a teardown, and this is no exception. We need to free the slider from the pickup shoe assembly, preferably without causing too much damage to either leaf spring or slider loops. There is a simple trick. Let's look at one of the loops at the end of the slider. You should be able to see small gaps where the end of the loop meets the base of the slider. One of these gaps should be wide enough to allow the spring to slide through. 
We can insert a small flathead screwdriver from the inside of the loop and gently push the spring against the base of the slider. And then we should be able to slide and insert the spring into one of the gaps. Once engaged, the spring can simply be pushed or pulled out from the side. There we go! Now that we have a bit of practice, let's try again on the other side. Flathead screwdriver in. Let's press the spring down. Slide spring in the gap and push out. I promise this gets easier and easier after a couple of tries. Our slider is now free and the spring is intact. Good stuff! Now I need to prepare the surface. The existing plating, scratches or dirt all need to be removed from the areas I want to treat. For this I use a simple sheet of high grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand the base of the pickup shoe until I get to the point where all I can see is shiny exposed brass. I'll also sand down the loops for cosmetic reasons. And that's it! Everything is now nice and shiny, and as you could see the process only took one minute or so. Now I need to clean the part thoroughly to remove any debris or greasy residues. I'll use a bit of alcohol and an old toothbrush for this. OK, all done! So I'll put that thing to the side for now and we'll have a look at the plating implements. Here's what I'll be using. I have a jar filled with a blue-green liquid, an old phone charger to which I fitted crocodile clips, I also identified the positive and negative leads in the process, I've got a piece of copper wire, a stick and a strip of pure nickel. The green liquid is a nickel acetate solution. You can make it yourself using a few common supermarket ingredients or buy the stuff ready-made. You'd have to look for nickel plating solution using any search engine and it should throw back quite a few results. I chose the DIY approach, which I am not going to cover here, as there are many, many, many YouTube videos on the topic. Instead, I would recommend you watch the video I used. It is linked at the top of the screen and also in the video description. It is well made, easy to follow, fun to watch, and most importantly, just works if you follow the instructions it provides. The process takes just over two hours end-to-end -end and only involved a quick five minutes setup followed by a two hours waiting time which is completely hands-off. All in all, a very simple affair. The resulting solution will keep for months, if not years, in a sealed container and can be used over and over again. So you only need to do this once and you'll be set for a while. Right, I'll open the jar and I'm going to start by attaching the slider to my piece of copper wire. Then I'll wrap the other end of the wire to a stick in a way that the slider is completely immersed in the solution when the stick rests on the top of the jar. Like so. Then I'll place my nickel strip on the opposite side of the jar and I'll try to position everything so the slider and nickel strips are as far away from each other as possible. Cool! Time for the crocodile clips. The positive side needs to be attached to the nickel strip, that would make it the anode in our circuit, and the negative side will need to be attached to the copper wire, itself attached to the slider, which would make it our cathode in our circuit. All we have to do now is plug the charger in, and if the polarity is correct, 
we should now see some bubbles building up around the slider. That's it. We are electroplating. So what's happening here? We have current flowing from the anode, our nickel strip, through the solution to the cathode, our slider. As current travels through the anode, it will cause some of the nickel to dissolve into the solution and take the form of ions. These are positively charged, so will be naturally attracted to the negative side of the circuit. Some of the ions in the solution will therefore travel with the current and deposit onto the slider to form a uniform layer of nickel. And if we look now, we should already be able to see some deposits. Yep, here they are, the little grey things there. Now, all we need to do is wait. The longer the wait, the thicker the nickel layer will be. I am going to let this run for about 40 minutes. This timing is not based on any scientific criteria or calculation and might be a bit too long, but a thicker layer cannot hurt given the purpose of the part. This bit is completely hands-off and doesn't need much supervision. So I'm going to use this time to put a few more things away now. 40 minutes have passed. Let's take a look. Yep, looks like it's ready. So let me disconnect the clips and we'll take the slider out and move to the bench. There we are. As you can see, the slider has now completely changed color and it is covered in a dull grey layer. Uh, this feels very smooth to the touch. I'll polish the part in a minute, but it would already be usable in this state. You'd actually find that the point contacts on the track would take care of some of the polishing for you. Now, the polishing is easy. I use a Dremel rotary tool. If, like me, you bought one with a few accessories, you'll probably have been given a sample of polishing compound and a few felt pads. You could use these for this purpose. You could also use a metal polish of your choice, which is what I'm doing here. As you can see, oh, excuse the splattering, you very quickly get to a shiny finish. I'll just give the part a final wipe and this bit will be done. All I need to do now is to reassemble the pickup shoe and this bit should be easier than the disassembly. Well, sort of. It still requires a bit of care to avoid bending the spring or other parts. But not complicated. There we are. Nice, isn't it? Let's compare it to a brand new one. Let me open the bag. OK, and as you can see, this all looks pretty similar from all sides. Yep, not bad, isn't it? Now, does this work? Well, yes, and actually you have already seen the result in action if you watched the last video. The star of the show, the Merklin 3163, used one of my test pieces for the duration of the episode. It's here now, let's uh, look at the chassis. Yes, this is how the pickup shoe looks like after three hours of near continuous use. The plating has survived so far and I'd say it looks like it is behaving like an original pickup shoe would too. Now let's attach our refurbished slider to its locomotive. Now I'll rail it and I'll give it a bit of power and we are in business. Cool. Now let's recap a bit. How much did I spend? Let's start with the money. As you could see, the process requires stuff that most of us will already have laying around somewhere. So the charger, the crocodile clips, the polish, the copper wire, the sandpaper, were all free. To make the solution, I needed some salt, 
which was also free. I had some in the cupboard, like everyone, and I only had to invest in the cheapest distilled white vinegar I could find, which is less than a pound a litre in any supermarket. And finally, we had the largest investment, which was the nickel anode, which cost me nine pounds delivered from Amazon. So I basically spent 10 pounds. As far as the time investment is concerned, as you have seen, there's very little active time. There was the preparation, which took only about two or three minutes. Polishing itself took two minutes max. The rest of the process is completely passive. It's just waiting. So it's all pretty low effort. And I think, given the cost of the spare parts, that it is perfectly justifiable. Two pickup shoes will get you out of the red. This process can also be used on other shiny parts, such as wheels, so I'm sure it could find a wider use on or around the layout, or maybe in the workshop, I think. The last bit is the longevity. It's too early for me to say anything about this, because uh, I've not used them for long enough. So what I'm going to do over the next uh, few weeks or months is to transfer the pickup shoes I've treated from locomotive to locomotive, and keep them in constant use until they wear off. And I shall report back on the number of hours it took for the pickup shoes to wear off. For now, I only know that it will still look good after three hours. So, that was it for today. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. That's much appreciated. I hope you found the video interesting, hopefully enough to give it a thumbs up or maybe even hit the subscribe button. Many thanks for staying with me that far and bye for now.